The concept of having low Earth orbit satellite constellations is traceable back to the 1980s. The idea was hatched as part of the strategic defense initiative that sought to have weapons stationed in orbit to deflect ballistic missiles. By the 90s, investors started seeing its potential for providing low latency communication. That is just a fancy way of saying fast communication. This prompted the launch of several commercial mega constellations like Iridium, Teledesic, Global Star, and Celestri. Soon, all these companies, named as if they were in a Star Trek work, would go bankrupt, probably because of the large costs of launching them. In 2015, a mad genius would throw his hat into the ring. This is the birth of a satellite development company that would change everything. When the SpaceX Satellite Development Facility opened in Redmond, Washington in January 2015, Starlink first came to public notice. At the opening, Elon Musk observed a major demand for low-cost broadband internet that was yet to be met globally. His mission was for Starlink to provide a bandwidth capacity of up to 50% of all backhaul communications traffic and up to 10% of local internet traffic in densely populated cities. In October 2019, Elon Musk posted a tweet using an internet connection routed through the Starlink network as a way of publicly testing the Starlink network. After the publicity test, an official beta test was then publicly conducted in November 2020. The beta testers experienced a speed of over 150 megabytes per second, beating the projected range for the test. It was a success. By February 2021, members of the public were allowed to pre-order. The target coverage date given to the pre-orders varied from 2021 to 2022, depending on the location. Growth would be rapid for this young company because SpaceX could boast of having at least 2,300 fully functional Starlink satellites in orbit as of September 2022. The paid beta testing service launched in October 2020 in the U.S. started extending to other countries since January 2021 beginning with the UK. These satellites are currently catering to the internet needs of Starlink's active 500,000 active subscribers. It is mind-blowing how fast the company took off like a rocket, literally. Starlink is focused on providing satellite internet service to disadvantaged regions across the world. They are also looking to compete with established service providers in urban locations. While it is exciting that he is doing this, the most exciting part of it all is that Elon Musk has indicated that he is banking on the profits he hopes to make from Starlink to fund his future plans of establishing a station on Mars. This satellite internet technology will also be deployed by SpaceX for communication on Mars. The network was initially limited to serving only around the registered address of the customers. However, Musk announced in a tweet in April 2021 that the service would now allow for more mobility, as users would be able to move around as they like with their Starlink unit by the end of 2021, following more satellite launches and software updates. This should open new possibilities for its usage. Elon Musk would step up his game with a top performance tier service, which was announced in February 2022 as Starlink Business. Starlink Business gives a much larger top performance antenna and a speed ranging between 150 and 500 megabytes per second. Another development in the services of Starlink was announced on July 7, 2022 by SpaceX, dubbed Starlink Maritime. Starlink Maritime will provide satellite internet services to users on the high seas. This would mean that whether on a cruise boat or on a passenger ship, you can stay connected online. 
Starlink Maritime would only be able to work on water with an expected speed of 350 megabytes per second. This is not coming cheap, as it would also cost a solid $10,000 for the user terminals and a $5,000 monthly subscription fee. Starlink's services have been of major interest in the military as well. The Air Force Research Laboratory of the United States conducted tests in 2019, demonstrating a data connection through Starlink to an aircraft in flight. In addition to that, further tests in 2019 resulted in a successful connection with Starlink on a gunship. Since the war in Ukraine started in February 2022, Starlink has become a major provider of internet service in the country, following the destruction of cable internet infrastructures in the country by Russian forces. This gives us an insight to how Starlink could disrupt how internet services are provided. To appreciate how far this technology has taken us, we need to take a detour back to the history of satellites. Placing artificial satellites in space started with the launch by the Soviet Union of Sputnik 1 in October 1957. Following that, the United States also successfully launched Explorer 1 in 1958. But for the purpose of commercial communications, the pioneer was Telstar 1 of Bell's Labs that was launched in 1962. With the invention of the Internet and the World Wide Web, the idea of using satellites to provide Internet services became a thing. A major pioneer in the field of satellite Internet provision was the Microsoft-funded initiative Teledesic, an ultimate failure that would cost over $9 billion. It was intended to provide cheap Internet access with speed up to 720 megabytes per second. This was a mind-boggling ambition at a time when the Internet was still taking its baby steps. Unsurprisingly, it was altogether forfeited in 2003. Its failure and the bankruptcy of other satellite Internet providers like Globalstar and Iridium discouraged any further foray into the field. Notwithstanding, the first Internet-ready satellite was launched in November 2003 by Utelsat. It was against this backdrop that the idea of a low Earth orbit satellite for providing faster internet became the driving force behind the development of Starlink. Starlink prides itself as the first and largest satellite constellation using a low Earth orbit to provide broadband internet with enough capacity to support live streaming, online gaming, video calls, and lots more. If you love learning about technology and crazy innovators like Elon, then subscribe to this channel and watch out for our exciting documentaries coming soon. The network stands on the shoulder of a big industry giant, SpaceX, whose experience in spacecraft and on-orbit operations is enabling Starlink's delivery of high-speed, low-latency satellite internet connection to users across the world. Prior to Starlink's launch, satellite internet services typically use single geostationary satellites orbiting the Earth at 35 or 786 kilometers. Consequently, the internet services provided by these satellites have high latency, which could hardly support online gaming, video conferencing, live streaming, and other heavy data activities. On the other hand, Starlink uses a constellation of thousands of satellites that orbit the Earth more closely at a distance of 550 kilometers, covering the entire planet. Their position in low orbit means a significantly lower latency rate compared to other satellite internet networks. It appears Elon Musk is not the only one with a vision of providing fast satellite internet. Around the same period he announced Starlink, one web constellation was also announced. Then in 2015, Samsung rolled out a proposal outlining a constellation of 4,600 satellites that would orbit at 1,400 kilometers and potentially provide a zettabyte monthly capacity globally for 5 billion internet users. By the way, a zettabyte is a trillion gigabytes. However, this plan had fizzled out by the turn of the decade 
and there hasn't been any further public release about it from Samsung. Also in 2015, Telesat announced plans for a smaller scale constellation of 117 satellites that would begin to offer internet service by 2021. Amazon, owned by billionaire Jeff Bezos, unveiled plans for a large broadband internet constellation of satellites in 2019. Their plan is to launch 3,236 satellites over the next decade in what they termed Project Kuiper. A big competitive advantage that Starlink has over the others, however, is its affiliation with SpaceX. SpaceX, as a big player in the manufacturing of spacecraft, offers Starlink a leverage that is unparalleled by its competitors. However, this is not to indicate that Starlink faces no challenge or that it has been having a smooth course. On the contrary, the network faces different forms of challenges. Before being able to offer satellite services in any country, the International Telecommunication Union stipulates that rights must be granted by the communications regulating body of each country. Therefore, although it has an almost global coverage, Starlink Network can only provide services in 40 countries as of September 2022. Besides that, there are business decisions and economic considerations that make some countries more favorable to the network than others. Be that as it may, beyond the 40 countries in which its services are already available, Starlink has pending approval with the regulatory bodies of several more countries. All these advancement and capabilities that Starlink is creating is exciting, but then it is coming at a huge cost and no, not monetary cost. Concerns on the effects of the Starlink constellation on astronomy and how it would add to the congestion in the orbital environment has been raised in various quarters. Starlink has responded by working towards the reduction of the brightness of their satellites when in operation. They equipped the satellites with Hall thrusters that would enable them to deorbit at the end of their life cycle. The satellites are further designed to prevent collisions autonomously. Notwithstanding, plans remain in motion to expand Starlink's service to every part of the world. And don't forget, part of its future objectives is to provide satellite communication on Mars. How that is going to unfold remains to be seen. In the meantime, Elon Musk has confirmed his commitment to seeking exemptions to international sanctions that prevent Starlink from delivering satellite broadband to countries like Iran. SpaceX's partnership with T-Mobile is expected to deliver mobile cell phone coverage to places where cell service is not existing by allowing the phones to connect to Starlink satellites. This is indicative of a future path into cell phone serving provision for Starlink. One question hangs in the air. Is Elon Musk's Starlink gradually taking over all our online communications? Comment below and see you next time.